by everybody average production marginal production and these uh, three stages and with calculations hope you can do these all the law of production the proper proportion and uh, stage one stage two stage three law of variable proportion we discussed isocons here efficiency in production do you need this one hello yes ma'am okay so uh, great please listen carefully let's say uh, we have two inputs okay so here you can see in x axis input 2 uh, y axis input 1 let's say here labor and fertilizer two inputs okay just here you can see the production curve related to this red one first see the red one input one input two two inputs these are the production curves that can produce things okay let's say any any production let's say rice production by using labor and urea nitrogen fertilizer then just see other side curve same input two and input one okay so this side because just see these two are separate okay first here input one input two so again another uh, line uh, diagram is there input one input two related to green one okay then again the same side but just think we keep this one that green one above the red one on the red one here one again just see my cursor here another one we take this green production curve here on this one then again input two comes here input one comes here the same direction so there are many many curves here many many red curves here many many green curves so some points for your easiness, I kept only two points where I touches two lines, but there are may, there may be many green lines towards this direction, many red lines towards this direction. Okay, then some points will come where these two lines in two directions, two lines are there. When touches this two line. These are the most efficient point because by using these two inputs, we can produce this, we can produce this in an efficient way, two products. Got it, Milanka? Up to now? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Then production possibility curve or production possibility frontier combines these points. And draw like this. Because here two products are there. Before that, you should remember three inputs are there. Okay? See, two inputs. But by using two inputs, we are producing output. Then these W, V, these points makes this production possibility curve. Or production possibility frontier. So inside this curve, let's say these, 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 these points, these points are feasible because inputs are there to produce output. But see here, they are outside this curve, these points are not feasible because no inputs to produce A and B. Because the feasible and efficient points we collected and we produce this curve. Then no more inputs to produce product A or B outside the curve. But inside the curve, it can produce but not efficient because these all inputs are not fully utilized to produce these two products. 
Now is it clear? How it become inefficient here? How it become unfeasible, even not feasible? Because no inputs are there to produce these products, two products. Now clear, Lanka? Yes, madam. Okay. So you can see here also outside not visible, inside visible. These two another two goods. Okay. So here again production possibility. Okay. Now uh, shall we move to today's section? Because today's section also related to production possibilities. But first of all, we'll see some calculations related to interdependence and gains from trade. Okay. So this is also very important section. Please. Listen very carefully. If you have any questions, uh, you can ask, you can raise. Okay. So in this section, you need to learn interdependence and gains from trade. Okay. So the name implies the meaning, interdependence, depending, and gains from trade. Trade is marketing. So we are gaining something from trade. Okay, now we will see what are the uh, intended learning outcomes of this section. So, interdependence and gains from trade. You, first of all, you should understand self sufficiency. What is self sufficiency? Then we can move to interdependence. Because you may have heard uh, in ancient times, we are self sufficient in price. But now, we are depending on other countries, interdependence. Okay? And next, you need to describe gains from trade. That means absolute advantage and comparative advantage. Okay? So I think uh, it's clear, but uh, while uh, we are moving, please uh, stop me if you have any questions. Okay? So now we will move to interdependence and gains from trade. First of all, we will see self-sufficiency and interdependence. So normally, you know, we have different, different wants. We, are, we have many needs. Okay. So I, I last time I explained the difference between needs and wants because needs we, need, we, we have to have for our survival. But wants, maybe, let's say I need a uh, glass of water because I mean, I'm too thirsty now. So it's our basic need, water. But if I want an ice cream, it's not my basic need. Okay, so that's why anyway, a society or economy produce goods and services to satisfy consumers' wants and needs. Okay, so needs must be satisfied because if we can't fulfill needs, we will die. But if we can't fulfill our wants, we will not die. Okay? If I want an AC in this room, I will not die without having an AC. If I want an ice cream, I will not die without having an ice cream. But if I need a glass of water when I'm being very, very thirsty, I will die if I didn't get this water or food when I require. Okay. So I think, uh, so here in self sufficiency means, sorry, self sufficiency means you need to understand our satisfy and needs, but for, for to satisfy our needs, we can do two things. Self-sufficiency, we can produce things by ourselves and we can consume. We don't want to depend on others. But interdependence means we have to depend on others because we can't produce everything by ourselves. Okay? So self-sufficiency and interdependence. So now you can see one alternative would be to produce everything that they need by themselves. That is self-sufficiency. Okay. Other alternative 
we have to depend on one another. Okay, so this leads to economic interdependence. It's the thing we are going to discuss today. Okay, so the question arises, which is better and why? To be self-sufficient or economic interdependence? Okay, now we will see uh, the answer for that because self-sufficient is good, but sometimes, you know, while producing the basic products, the cost may be higher than producing other countries, then it's cheaper to import if we are considering international trade. That is related to macroeconomics. But here we are discussing microeconomics. Now we will see the self-sufficient and interdependent situation related to uh, individuals and the local economy. Okay, so here self-sufficiency, that picture implies many, many things. She grows and she harvested by herself. The people, the, the, the ladies producing things. So these are self-sufficiency. Okay, see, they are growing things to survive by themselves, not depending on others. So uh, Self-sufficiency means able to maintain oneself or itself without outside it. Okay, or in other words, we can say without buying from or being helped by others, we are producing our needs and wants by ourselves. Okay, now we'll move to interdependence and trade. Okay, for our easiness, We'll, we'll start uh, with general observation about the society we live. So in individual nations, they rely on specialized production and exchange as a way to address problems caused by scarcity. Because you all know we don't have resources abundantly. We discussed about the scarcity. Okay? So we don't have enough resources with us. So, but we have many wants, many needs. The problem of satisfying many needs or many wants by using limited resources. So that's why the problem of scarcity, we have to depend on others basically. Okay, so that's why we need to discuss why is interdependence and what determines production and trade when individuals and nations are economically interdependent. Okay? So, normally interdependence occurs or happens because people are better off when they specialized and trade with others. Because let's say we can't produce potato, we are taking potato from a potato farm. We can't uh, produce meat if we consider local condition only. We can go for meat seller and we can take meat. Okay, if we can't grow fruit juice or let's say apple juice, we don't have, we don't grow apple. So we can go to a seller or producer, we can take that juice. Okay, so that's why we have to depend on others every time in a normal economy. Okay, so now we'll see what determines the patterns of production and trade. Okay, so here your familiar word comes now. So trade basically depends on opportunity cost. Do you remember what is opportunity cost simply? Anybody? Gaya? Gaya Mishan. Do you remember what is opportunity cost? Hmm? Simply, what is that? Gishani?
any answer or if you if you can't understand that opportunity cost please say again i will inform guy i hope you are here hello or anjali or anybody who can answer opportunity cost simply we are done with asking uh opportunity cost avastha mm. you know I have given one uh, answer, one good name. Yes, the, your entire uh, your text, uh, your chat box. Um, Share of the option sacrificed in making a decision. Yes, very good. Measure of the option sacrificed in making a decision. Shashana, no? Shashana, answer. Is it Shashana? Sa sorry. Sahasna. Madam. Sah Sahasna Madanayak. Yes, your answer is uh, very correct because we are sacrificing one thing to get one thing. That is the opportunity. That means the foregone cost. Okay, foregone cost. Then with examples I, uh, I mentioned last time, let's say today you, you participated this lecture. Okay, but you may have uh, gone to a special, I mean, let's say part-time job and earn some money. Let's say you have gone there and you earn two thousand rupees per day per hour. Okay, then if you if you stay here, you miss that money. That is your opportunity cost simply. Okay, today also we are going to do some calculations related to opportunity cost. Then you will be able to understand. Now, all uh, I hope all got slight idea. Now, Gaya, Gishani, is it okay? Hmm? Okay. So uh, now we will see how that opportunity cost decides trade. Okay, so that's very important. How opportunity cost decides the trade uh, options okay so now we will see a simple model the modern economy okay so in this economy we need to think only two goods are producing but you know in a normal economy many goods are producing but for our listeners we just think only two goods are producing let's say potato and meat only two people are there potato farmer and meat farmer then what should each produce and why should they trade we need, we have two questions okay now we'll see here okay so here just for your listeners i got very simple i mean hypothetical values here production of potato farmer and cattle farmer let's say potato farmer needs 20 hours to produce 1 kilogram of meat. Whereas, he needs only 10 hours to produce 1 kilogram of potato. Okay, just half. Then, for in case of meat farmer, he needs only 1 hour to produce 1 kilo of meat. In case of potato, he need eight hours to prepare one kilo of potato. No, yes, potato. So just after seeing this, you can see potato farmer, it's more beneficial or economical to produce potato because he consumes less hours than producing meat. For meat farmer, of course, obvious, it is cheaper to produce meat rather than potato. But here, potato also he can he has some advantage because even though he takes ten hours, he also takes eight hours, just slight difference. But here you can see very huge difference. Okay, for our listeners, we just change the amount. 
produce in 40 hours. Let's say 20 hours, 1 kilo 20 hours. Then during 40 hours, 2 kilo meat. Then potato, 1 kilo 10 hours. Then you know 40 hours, 10 hours, 1 kilo. Then 40 hours, 4 kilo. Up to uh, first line is clear to you all. Their production. If anybody didn't understand, I'll explain again. Can you explain it again? Okay, great. Okay, see here, let's say there are two people in the economy, two farmers. First farmer, second farmer. Okay, first farmer can produce meat one kilo and he consumes 20 hours for that. Then the same farmer is producing potato. He takes only 10 hours to produce 1 kilo of potato. Okay. Then another farmer, he, he needs 1 hour to produce 1 kilo of meat. And 8 hours to produce 1 kilo of potato. Up to now clear the given data. Bandara? Yes. yes. Oh. So then, see here, kilograms, hours are there. We need to take the quantity. So we just, for our easiness, our calculation easiness, because we need to calculate the opportunity cost here, we got amount producing for maybe 20 hours, 30 hours, anything as you wish you can take. I took 40 hours just for making you more understand. Okay. Then if we consider 40 hours, let's say 20 hours, potato farmer takes to produce 1 kilo. Then within 20 hours, he produces 1 kilo. Then within 40 hours, obviously, he can produce 2 kilo. Clear, Pandara? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Then see the same farmer, potato. 10 hours, he produced only 1 kilo. Then 40 hours, 10 hours, 1 kilo, 40 hours, 4 times, 4 kilo. Clear? Yes. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Then the same way, meat farmer. Meat farmer, think that side. During 1 hour, he produced only 1 kilo. Then 40 hours, 40 kilo. Simple mathematics. Clear, Mandara? Yes, ma'am. Oh, okay. Then here, 8 hours, he takes to produce 1 kilo of potato. Then 40 means 40 divided by 8. That means 5 kilo. Understood? Yes, ma'am. Oh, okay, hope everybody understood. Now we will see the self-sufficiency. That means no exchange. That means potato farmer produce potato by himself. Meat farmer is producing meat by himself. Sorry, potato farmer is producing potato and meat both. Meat farmer is producing also meat and um, potato both while ignoring or not considering each other. Therefore, no exchange or trade among them. Therefore, each can only consume what they produce only. That means their production possibility curve as well as consumption possibility. That means production possibility equals to consumption possibility because they are how much they produce, how much that much they consume. No trade. If they produce 10 kilo. If they sell five, they have to consume five. But let's say they produce ten, then they are not selling, then they have to consume the same. Okay, so that's why production possibilities and consumption possibilities are same. No economic gains. So that's why uh, we need to consider when economic gains 
when there is a trade, there is an economic gain. Now we will see the way. Okay. So here in previous one, you may remember when we meet physically, I teach this, I think, again because we have some calculations. Okay. So you can see here potato farmer, if he is producing only potato, two kilo of Sorry, if we produce meat, 2 kilo of meat, potato 4. Okay, so here I draw the same for your understanding 2 and 4. Okay, so then if we take the midpoint just to see the efficiency, we can say 1 and 2 whole. Okay, so anyway, he can see the production possibilities between 2 meat and four potatoes. His production possibility, consumption possibility is same. We can consume what he produces. Is it clear this production possibility? Hello? Yes, ma'am. Oh, great. Then we will see at the meat, meat uh, sellers one, okay? See, 40 meat and 5 potato. Now we can draw in the production possibility curve the same. See, 40 and 5. Then here also we can take the midpoint and consider the situation, okay? So here we, they both, if self-sufficient, they produce they are, their production possibility curves are like this. Okay. So let's say if there is a trade between them, then we need to discuss if there is a trade between uh, them. Just remember, I just put a uh, yellow color here. See, what is more economical for first farmer, potato farmer, to produce? Potatoes. Four potatoes. Yes, we can produce four kilos of potatoes if we take the unit time, 40 hours. But meat farmer, of course, it's, it's cheaper to produce meat. Okay? Now, we'll move... Uh, Just to see what is trade. Now we know it's important to trade between these two parties because one is specialized for one thing, another is specialized for another thing by using the same cost, maybe same uh, input, same time. Okay? So then uh, we'll simply see what is trade. Trade involves the transfer of goods and services from one person to another, often in exchange for money. So we are transferring goods and services for money. Okay. Perhaps today uh, you have taken your dinner from outside. You are taking the good and you are giving money. Okay. Maybe you have seen your doctor or somebody, you are getting service and you are paying money. Okay, so exchange for money. So economists refer to a system or network that allows trade as a market. Because in a market where the exchanges are going on receiving and giving money. Okay, so here you can see the flow of currency is also moving. If we consider international trade. Okay, because export and import are occurring. We are, while importing, we are giving money. While exporting, we are receiving money. Okay? So, these are the general points. Now, again, we will move to potato farmer and meat farmer. Okay? Now, each would be better off if they specialize in producing the product that they are more suited to produce. Then trade each other because for potato farmer, you have seen producing potato is better than producing meat. But for meat farmer, 
producing meat is better than producing potato. Then the meat farmer can use all resources to produce meat. Potato farmer can use all resources to produce potato. Then they both can exchange products. Okay. So there are four potato farmers should produce potato. Meat farmer should eat. The actual quantities, however, depend on relative price. Okay. So now this is based on comparative advantage. Now new, new, new name came to you. Okay. Comparative advantage. While comparing two things, because we compare the production hours, then we decided what is more economical to produce. Okay. So here we need to discuss about the opportunity cost. So the opportunity cost simply is the cost of the next best alternative that is given up to obtain other, obtain other good. Okay. So here, again the same example. Now we will see, we will calculate the opportunity cost. Listen carefully very well. Okay. See here. Opportunity cost of producing potato. See, potato farmer. Opportunity cost of producing potato. You have to give up meat to produce potato. Then to produce 4 kilo of potato, you need to give up 2 kilo of meat. That means 2 divided by 4. Got it? To produce four. Because four won't cost normally meat cost. But we are producing four kilo of potato instead of two kilo of meat. That means opportunity cost of producing potato means four kilo of potato we give up 2 kilo of meat. So the opportunity cost is 0.5. Is it clear first, first line? If anybody didn't understand, I can explain again. How to calculate opportunity cost of producing potato. Madam, please explain again. Oh, okay, great. I'll explain again. Uh, see... Uh, this this table. I think this table is clear to you all. Our hypothetical table. Okay. So from here, let's say that potato farmer specialized to produce potato, but he has to give up producing meat. That is foregone cost. That cost we need to calculate. We need to think if we need to produce 4 kilo, we need to give up 2 kilo of meat. Then if we produce 1 kilo of potato, how much we need to give up? Then if 4 kilo of potato, we need to give up, uh, we need to give up 2 kilo of meat. To produce 1 kilo of potato, how much we need to give up meat? 2 divided by 4. Simple mathematics. Now clear? Yes, yes. 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 Okay. Then, then calculate the uh, opportunity cost of meat farmer. How much? Then you need to take meat first. To produce 40 kilo of meat, you need to give up 5 kilo of potato. Then you need to decide to produce 1 kilo of meat. How much potato we need to give up? Hmm? It says in this slide. Clear? First we will see 
potato farm an opportunity cost of producing potato the same thing we can calculate here the opportunity cost of producing meat then to produce 2 kilo of meat we need to give up how many kilos of potato one kilo very good 4 kilo of potato then to produce 1 kilo of meat how much we need to give up how many kilos of potato Okay. Yes, very good. Two kilo of potato. See here, two came like this. Then same way we can calculate for meat farm opportunity cost of producing potato. We will see again for the meat farmer. This is meat. This is potato. So we will see the opportunity cost of producing potato. So five kilo producing five kilo of potato, he need to give up forty kilo of meat. That is opportunity cost of potato producing potato. How much? Five. Yes, eight. Five. Then opportunity cost of producing meat. To produce forty kilo of meat, just he needs to give up five kilo of potato. To produce one kilo of meat, how much he needs to give up? Five divided by forty. Forty. Then how much? One divided by eight. eight. Yes, very good. See, it came like. This. Can you calculate like this independently? सरी वाइल कैलकुलेटिंग मोर एंड मोर यू कैन गेट आइडिया ओके सो नाउ वी विल सी अगेन एंड अगेन वी आर कमिंग सम कैलकुलेशन सो फर्स्ट वी विल सी हाउ ट्रेड एक्सपेंस कंसम्पन ऑपरचुनिटीज बिकॉज यू कैन आइडेंटिफाई नाउ मीट फार्मर स्पेशलाइजिंग टू प्रोड्यूस मीट Potato farmer is specializing to produce potato. Then their consumption can increase because they have, um, uh, they they have enough production at lower cost. They can take from outside rather than producing by themselves. Okay, so that is why we are discussing about the gains from trade, the net benefits to. Economic agents from being allowed an increase in voluntary trading with each other. Nobody is forcing. If they like, both of them they can exchange their goods. Okay. So now that's why the trade comes between the people. Okay. So the the, the first one the net the economic benefits. That a person or nation gains from engaging in trade with another, if a nation is self-sufficient when it has to produce everything it needs itself, which can be difficult because it either needs to allocate resources to every good and service. Previous example: If potato farmer needs to produce wool, he needs to. Put resources to produce meat as well as he needs to produce resources to produce potato, rather than specializing into one product. Okay, and limited diversity even. But with trade, they have very very, uh, I mean, opportunity to get diverse production, diverse goods and services. Those who can produce, those who have resources, they can produce. And they can sell to others. Okay, so that's why trade occurs when people or countries exchange goods and services with each other. Both parties are better off. Gains from trade are the benefits an individual or country experiences when they engage in trade with others. Okay, so normally 
uh, before going to many calculations of this opportunity cost, we'll discuss briefly what are the main two types of gains from trade. Two types are there, dynamic and static. So after seeing the name, you can understand some, you can get some idea. Hmm? Dynamic means dynamic, continuously changing, dynamic. But static means static, just the status, the, the, the same one point. If we move one point to another point, it's dynamic. But static means just a, a one point or a one state. Okay, so that's why in the dynamic gains, you can static gains, you can say social welfare we consider. Okay, so. Production possibility frontier you discussed. So these all we can gain from static gains in a separate uh, uh, specific place. Static. Okay. But dynamic gains means the nation's economy, all economy we need to consider. So then the nation's income, production capabilities. So they are changing every time through specialization. That's why it is dynamic gains. Okay. So here you can see when they do trade, they have the comparative advantage, which consider mainly the opportunity cost. So a country or maybe a producer. Okay. So in your, your level, we can consider micro level. An individual person, individual firm, or producer has a lower opportunity cost, is more efficient or better at producing the wood than the other. Okay, if foregone cost is very low, then you should specialize for that one. Okay, so that's why. A country or producer has an absolute advantage if it can produce more of good than another country or producer using the same level of resources. Let's say we have only two laborers to produce meat and potato, but rather than taking dividing these resources into two products, we can specialize the product which has more economic gains, okay? If that foregone is very low, if something we foregone, the opportunity cost is very low, we can just forget it. We can foregone or we can uh, forget it, okay? So, the comparative advantage and absolute advantage without sharing, they have their own advantage, okay? So now, uh, in case of this uh, production uh, possibilities, we need to measure the cost of production as well. But normally, the cost components here, we are not discussing in detail because normally, the difference between costs decide who should produce because producers should produce at lower cost. Okay? And they should decide how much should be traded based on cost component. Okay. So there are normally we consider two ways of measuring differences in cost of production. Number of hours required to produce a unit of output. Our example, we discuss one kilo of potato, one kilo of meat, likewise. Or the opportunity cost sacrificing one good for another. So that's why today we are discussing basically this concept, opportunity cost concept, because we are considered gains from trade to do. Okay. So first of all, we will see because comparative and absolute advantage, two advantages we can take. So absolute advantage means. If any producer can produce the product by using smaller quantity of inputs, 
it gives absolute advantage. Then you can say potato farmer can produce more potatoes. So why wheat farmer produce more meat? That is absolute advantage. Okay. So here the same example. Now we we'll move with this example the comparative advantage. Okay. So comparatively, that farmer, the, the, the meat farmer, uh, the, the, let's say potato farmer gives up 0.5 kilo of meat. See previous one, I think you remember. Four divided by two. I think previous one. You yes, see, potato farmer just the the, the uh, opportunity cost of producing potato is point five. Lowest opportunity cost. If we forward meat. It's okay, you can just go on because the opportunity cost is only 0.5. Okay. If, uh, if, if uh, he produces, if he needs to produce potato, the opportunity cost, the forward cost of producing meat is only 0.5. That means he can go for producing potato. For the meat farmer, it is only 1 divided by 8 means 8 times beneficial of producing meat than producing potato. Okay, so here that explains again. See, potato farmer gives up 0.5 kilo of meat to produce 1 kilo of potato. Understood this, this line? Hmm? Yes. Okay. yes okay. So the ratio is 8 to 1 for uh, meat farm. I just put as cattle meat farm. Okay. So with that idea, now we will go with the principles of comparative advantage. So the main principle, comparative advantage and differences in opportunity cost are the basis for specialized production and trade. Whether it's national, whether it's international trade, we need to consider the differences in opportunity cost. Okay, so maybe individuals, regions, nations, Specialized because they have comparative advantage, not absolute advantage. Okay, absolute advantage, they have to produce many things. But comparative advantage based on the opportunity cost, they should prepare for trade to take maximum economic benefit. Okay, so other benefits also there. More products and services they can experience and they can get more knowledge about the uh, production process. And they can produce more and more, same amount of effort, about more and more output by using the same amount of effort, maybe same amount of cost, maybe same, same amount of time. Okay. Higher productivity and benefits everyone in the society. We can take higher benefits and higher productivity. And talents are not wasted because potato farmer is specialized in producing potato. Meat farmer is specialized in producing meat. So there are talents they can use in a maximum way to produce these things. Okay. So another example. Let's say producer A can produce oil, 10 barrels of oil or 5 liters of whiskey. Hmm? 
let's say producer B can produce 20 barrels of oil O, 40 liters of whiskey. Okay, so now we need to decide what is more economical because A can't produce both by using same resources rather so than specializing. Just after seeing, we can observe, we can produce for producing oil. We'll see after doing calculation. But here we can see producer B should produce for producing the whiskey specialized. Okay. Now, one unit of labor in each producer can produce either oil or whiskey. We say one unit of labor. Okay, so a unit labor with producer A can produce either 10 barrels of oil or 5 liters of whiskey. So out of these two, they can produce only one thing. We need to decide what is it. Let's say a unit labor with producer B can produce either 20 barrels of oil or 40 liters of whiskey. Okay, now we will see, while well, calculate opportunity cost for two producers in producing two products. Okay, see, A, B, two producers, O, C, I mentioned as opportunity cost. If specializes only for oil, you have to take oil, then whiskey, producer A, opportunity cost of producing oil is 0.5. Opportunity cost of producing whiskey is 2. Clear? Because 5 bottles of whiskey, 10. Barrels of oil. We to take one uh, uh, bottle of oil. We need to uh, devote or sacrifice only 0.5 of whiskey. So it is cheaper. So while considering the opportunity cost, it's cheaper to produce oil for him. Now clear this calculation. Yes, ma'am. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay, please practice by yourself. Then, uh, sorry, here also. Again. Just uh, instead of keeping countries in international trade, I put as producers. Okay. The same producer A and producer B. Let's say producer B can produce. Oil, 20 bottles, or oh, 20 barrels, I kept as barrels, as I remember. Yes, barrels. Yes, barrels and whiskey liters. So, producer B can produce 20 barrels of oil or 40 liters of whiskey. So, if, let's say, he B specialized to produce only oil. Then 20 lead, 20 barrels of oil gives 40 liters of whiskey. Then just to produce one liter of oil, he needs to sacrifice two liters of whiskey. Now clear? Hello, is it clear now? Oil. Anybody who needs more explanation? Bandara, clear? Chandima? Hello. Hope you all can hear me. Yes, we can hear yes, you. Uh, Sorry, yes, need more explanation? Yeah. Okay. Okay. The same way, 
let's say two producers are there a and b previous one is clear i think yeah it's clear okay so the same way let's say producer b needs to specialize for oil okay then consider these two lines so if he produce 20 barrels of oil he need to give up 40 liters of whiskey then to produce one barrel of oil he need to sacrifice how much 2 liters of oh. whiskey yeah then if he specialized for whiskey 40 liters of whiskey he need to sacrifice only 20 liters or 20 barrels of oil then for one he need to give up only 0.5 now clear no, it's, yes, ma'am. Okay, great. So, sorry. Okay, now we will see the comparative advantage. That means for A, it would move one unit of labor from whiskey to oil. It would sacrifice five liters of whiskey to gain ten barrels of oil. That means the same thing we discussed here. Ten five previous one. That's why it came as two. Here it came as point five. Okay. So here also again. Moving one unit of labor from oil to whiskey production would lead a sacrifice of 10 barrels of oil to gain 5 liters of whiskey. Okay, that means the second one, 2. In wordings, okay. So while reading uh, all again, you can understand all again. That means just to sacrifice one thing. If they move one labor from oil to whiskey, that means the opportunity cost uh, is very high here. If you produce whiskey, but here opportunity cost is low. If we move from labor from whiskey to oil, that means specializing in producing oil. Now clear the same what we calculated in words. For the producer be the same way, we move, if it move from one unit of labor from whiskey to oil, it would sacrifice 40 liters of whiskey to gain 20 barrels of oil, what we calculated here, 2. Okay, so in other words, we can say, Moving one unit of labor from oil to whiskey. See, one unit of labor from oil to whiskey. Oil to whiskey, specializing for whiskey. Would be lead to a sacrifice of 20 barrels of oil to gain 40 liters of whiskey. That means the uh, opportunity cost is only half, 0.5. Okay, so that's why for producer B, the opportunity cost for oil is 4. That means more cost. But that means 4 times higher than the producer B. That means 2 compared to half. You see, 2 and half, 4 times more than that. Producer B, because producer B should produce whiskey, producer A should produce oil. Okay, otherwise, the opportunity cost of oil is four times higher than that of producer B. Producer B can produce only half 
of that, he needs two times. That means two and half, four times he can take more, uh, more, more benefits. I mean, for the A producer, it is more beneficial to produce oil. For the B, it is more beneficial to produce whiskey. Okay, so the basic is calculating the opportunity cost on and decide what is more cheaper. Okay, so uh, by using many, many, many products, you can just calculate the opportunity cost accordingly and you can understand what is more cheaper. Okay, we'll uh, do one more calculation. I think then you can get more idea. Maybe for the first listening, you will many of you will not understand 100%. But anyway, uh, in continuously calculations, you can understand. Okay. So, reference to when producer A, oil can be produced cheaper than producer B. Okay. So, the same point we can say each producer specializing in production of the product in which it has the lower opportunity cost. Okay. So, with the opportunity cost, you need to uh, discuss these things. Okay. So, that's why comparative advantage means they have to consider the opportunity cost and consider the lowest opportunity cost to specialize a particular product or maybe service. Okay. Based on the example. Okay, here also picture says the difference between absolute advantage, different in rice land and tea land. Okay. The picture here also you can see the comparative advantage. They are both producing and getting benefits by exchanging these things in comparative advantage. We will do one example. And I think you can get more idea of uh, opportunity cost. Okay. So, let's say two producers are there. Producer A, B, they are producing hats and shoes. Okay. Now, shall we calculate by yourself in case of producer A, what is the opportunity cost of producing hats and what is the opportunity cost of producing shoes? First take producer A. You have the formula. Cost of alternative wood, cost of toss and wood. Let's say you need to calculate the opportunity cost of hat as denominator. When shoes come here, alternative good is shoes. If you consider the opportunity cost of producing shoes, shoes comes here, chosen good, alternative. Now try to calculate uh, opportunity cost of producing hats to producer A, but then producing shoes. Anybody who calculated first, please put in the chat box. Now time is enough. Hmm? I didn't see anybody's answer. Uh, for the producer A, opportunity cost of producing Mandar gave the answer. Producer A, opportunity cost of producing hats. Okay, when we gave the answer, now we will see the correct answer, okay? Opportunity cost of 
producing hat. Huh? I told opportunity cost of producing hat. I think only one gave the correct answer. Huh? Bandara didn't get the point. I mean, the chosen good is hat because opportunity cost of producing hat. Okay. Now got it? Yes, ma'am. Okay, cost of alternative wood comes as 25, hat is 50, so that is 0.5. Better you calculate it, okay? Then you got your problem. So, uh, in the future, the opportunity cost of producing hat, the chosen product is hat. Because they need to produce hat. 50 hats to 25 pairs of shoes, then one hat they need to share, devote only 0.5 pairs of shoes. Half of pair of shoes only for one hat. Then producing hat is cheaper here. Now calculate other thing. Other way, opportunity cost of producing shoes means. Your answer is correct. Now, got two hats, first pair of shoes. The opportunity cost of producing one pair of shoes. Now, clear to you all? Yes, ma'am. Okay, Ravindu, now clear? Yes, ma'am. Okay, good. Now, I think no question. Uh, Aditya and all, what the answer? First, uh, they did the mistake, but now I think uh, correctly calculated. Okay. Then for the producer B, the same way, let's say the opportunity cost of producing one hat. The selected one is hat, 30 and 45 pairs of shoes, the given answer. Then given given information, the, the, the opportunity cost or foregone cost is only 1.5 pair of shoes per hat. Because that is the foregone cost. Only 1.5 pairs of shoes for one hat. Then shoe, more shoes we need to give up per hat. What the point? So one pair of shoes, the opportunity cost is 0.65. Okay, chosen good, alternative good. Then you can calculate, you can prepare a summary table like this. Opportunity cost of producing hats and shoes in each producer. A, we calculate opportunity cost as 5. You just interchange this one. I think you remember this very well. Okay. Then opportunity cost of producing hats and shoes. So A has a lower opportunity cost of producing hats. B has lower opportunity cost of producing shoes. Okay. Any example you can take. Use hypothetical values and practice, practice, practice. Then I think you will never forget. Then in other words, we can say every hat produced, producer A gives up 0.5 pairs of shoes. Understood? Because every hat produced, because the opportunity cost means foregone cost. Foregone from where? From the shoes. Okay. So every one hat produced, it foregone only 0.5 pair of shoes. Okay. Here also you can calculate the same. See here. See, producer A, 
So 50 heads, 25 of shoes he has to give up. Then for one head, he need to give up only 0.5 pair of shoes. Okay, but if you come to producer, uh, sorry, if it comes to shoes, for 25 pair of shoes, he need to give up 50 head. Then one pair of shoes, he need to give up two heads. It is not economically beneficial. Recording in progress. He need to one pair of shoes, he need to give up 0.67 hands only. Okay. So that's why finally B, every pair of shoes give up 0.67 hands. Here A give up 0.5 pair of shoes for every head. Now clear up to here all calculations. Yes, madam, it's clear. Okay. okay, please practice. And if any problems, we can again discuss because next uh, week also we are discussing with production possibility curves. And this, because if you are familiar with the calculations, it's easy to teach you uh, these points with production possibility curves. Okay, we will uh, draw tangents and, uh, you know, uh, sine, cos, tangent and values we have to take. And we can calculate these things easily, but first practice manual calculations like this. Then you will never forget. Okay. Here only you can understand though the point comes here, we are giving up shoes. Okay. Though points comes here, we give up Hats because this opportunity cost means foregone cost. We selected shoes. The opportunity cost is for hats. We selected hats. The opportunity cost is for shoes. Okay. So you need to consider these uh, two points very clearly and slowly you can understand. Now we will see A must sell the hats, but th that is also more important. While trading hats, let's say A should specialize for trading hats because the opportunity cost is very low. Only he needs to give up 0.5 pair of shoes only for one hat. Then here A must sell hats more price. If we consider price, more price than point. But let's say this is the point price. If we consider this as a price, the selling price of hat may be more than 0.5 and we would like to buy less price than 1.5. Why? See, the hat is 1.5. Okay? So, while calculating these values, you can get these ideas as well. If it relates to hat, this is like this because we can assume one hat for one pair of shoes. Okay. In other way, when trading shoes, because we should specialize for shoes, the, the, the opportunity cost is low. But he should consider when he is specializing to produce shoes. Every time the shoes, the price should be more than 0.62, A must buy lower than 2. See, when you specialize shoes, 
it goes in that way. When it considers facts, it should go in that way. Now clear? Yes, ma'am. Okay, please uh, read carefully one by one and do calculations by yourself. Then only uh, you can get an idea. Anyway, if you can understand while teaching, most probably you can understand by yourself afterwards. Okay, now we'll come to previous hats and shoes. Now they are specializing. A is specializing to produce 50 hats, no shoes. B is specializing shoes, no hats. But before you remember, A specialized 50 hats and 25 shoes, very big. And B specialized, B produces 30 hats and 45 shoes. Okay, now we'll see gains on, from trade for your understanding with hypothetical values. Okay, that means see clearly the table. Production and consumption without trade. Hats 50 for A, shoes 25 for A, hats 30 for B, shoes 45 for B. This is the initial situation. Sorry, I it just changed. Now clear, you nobody told me. Is it clear? You are previous one also. I'll explain. Is it clear that the slides? Yes, ma'am. Yes, sorry, I forgot. I just minimized again. Okay. Now, this is the previous one. Before specializing, you remember uh, producers, 50 heads and 25 shoes. B producers, 30 heads and 45 shoes. But after specialization, let us assume A produces total 50 hats, only no shoes, because he can take shoes from B at lower cost. From B, he can produce shoes only. He will not produce hats because he can take hats from A. With that, we will move to this table. Production and consumption without trade, C. A produced hats, shoes, B produced hats, shoes this much. Okay? Without having any trade before they use the same. But see, the, uh, we are assuming if production is like this. Uh, A can produce 60 hats, shoes 30 hats, Again, 30, shoes 55. Okay, slight increase of the production and consumption. Then if, let's say, they are doing a trade. They are giving, because hats, A, give hats. And get shoes. For B, he is getting hat from A and giving shoes to A. B is producing shoes and giving shoes to A. A is producing hats and giving hats to B. Now clear till uh, trade. If, that means we are, we are assuming these points. These are given and we are assuming the production is like this. Clear? It's clear. I'll explain again. Okay. So that means, let's say, A and B, two producers are there in our previous example. We got the last one. Okay. Then, hat A produces 50 hats, 
produces 25 shoes without prey. These are the given quantities without prey. Okay. 50, 25, 30, 45. These are the given data without prey. Let's say for prey, if the production is 60, 30. So maybe just simply give the production lines. And if prey occurs, we know A gives hat because A specializes for hat. And B specializes for shoes. If A gives hat to B, B gives shoes to A. That means let's say we assume trade occurs and they are exchanging each items. Then A give hat, one hat, and get one shoe. We just assume. And B get one hat from A and give one shoe to B. So B get one hat from A and give one shoe to A. We up to now? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Then consumption. We can see the consumption from six production is 60. He gave one, that is 59. Here production we assume 30, he got also one, that is 31. Here also production is one, he get one hat, 31. And but he is giving shoes, that means production is 55. Got he just gave one that is 54. Okay, now we will see gains from prey. Here consumption is 59. Now, before it's 50. Here 31. Before it's 25. You can compare without trade and with trade. Now it's 30 before, now it's 31. Before it's 45 without trade, now it's 54. Okay, you can see the gains from trade. Plus 9 here, plus 4, plus 9. Plus nine. So if hypothetical values are given to you, you will be able to calculate the gains from trade. Now clear this table slightly. Gains from trade. Ah, should I explain again? Yes, it's oh. better. Easy. Okay, great. See here, if you produce 60 and you give one, you remain, the, the, the hats remain for your consumption is 59. But before, without trade, your consumption is 50. Okay? Then, sorry? Before trade, shouldn't it be 60? Minutes? No, no, no. Before because we got it because as if the production was 60, then yeah, we but one. We, we consider this if trade, if they are doing trade, the production is like this. But here, before trade, see, without trade, so that is 50. Production and consumption without trade, the previous one, we, uh, see, I'll show you again. See here, 50, 25, because A producing 50, uh, A, uh, shoes, a producing uh, 50 shoe hats and 25 shoes, reproducing 30 and 45. But here we consider which is, these are hypothetical values. Just we assume while doing trade, we are they are not specializing fully. 
for trade, but they are producing both 60 hats, 30 shoes, 30 uh, hats and uh, 55 shoes. If so, they are specializing in trade A for hats and B for shoes. Okay, so in that case, they are consuming before because before trade they consume only 50. But now they have to give one with this because this is the trade tradable production. Then, then they are their consumption quantity is now 59 because. Here 50, now 59, because from this production, he gave only one. Now clear? Bandara now, is it clear now? Because 50 now, 59 now uh, is for his consumption, but previously he has 50, because without trade. Now, with trade, he has to give one because we just assume these values also. If uh, the, the values are different, because let's say you are giving two, 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 two here in your calculation. Because in the calculation, you have, we are given values to you. Just uh, assume your production is 70 or your production is 40. Uh, shoes production is 50. So likewise, we are assuming and we are giving trade values as well. Let's say you want to give two hats to B, three hats to B, and B needs to give two shoes to A. Then accordingly, you need to calculate the gains from trade. Now clear, Mandara? Okay. okay. Uh, and it says question. if the production is 60 and we give one, uh, then the gain from trade would be nine. Yes, nine. yes. Great. Uh, it's only a hypothetical value. Yeah, yeah, hypothetical value. Uh, Just for your understanding. But if we have the real values, uh, we can just get an idea because normally uh, we assume two people two products. So that's why we are we are having hypothetical values just to get an idea. But in the real world, there may be millions of products, millions of producers. So we have to think accordingly. But the, 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 the concept we need to consider like this. Got a slight idea now? Yes, ma'am. No. Okay. Please read more and more. And uh, from the internet also, you can download many things and you can get an idea after getting some uh, means at least slight uh, idea. Okay. So normally, now we can understand if the producer decided to trade with each other, both get benefits because they both will be able to consume more goods than they would before they Trader. Okay. Here, before they consume this, the same production function turns to consumption function. But now, while trading, they gain something from the trade. That's why gains from trade we are discussing. Okay. So, to be profitable, the same way uh, in the previous one. A must sell hats at a price higher than its opportunity cost. Remember point five. B will only buy them the price lower than its opportunity cost. That means 1.5 per pair of shoes. They have to sell at least higher than the opportunity cost. They need to buy lower than the opportunity cost. Otherwise, both of them are not getting benefits. That's why we assume price of one hat equals one pair of shoes. We saw the hypothetical statements. Okay? So, key takeaways we will see 
self sufficiency is not desirable because it's it's not practical it is self sufficient because we don't have all resources to develop or or to all goods because you know uh, we have very limited resources we have limited land we have limited labor we have limited capital or money we have limited entrepreneurial skills so it's very difficult to produce all goods by all people based on the opportunity cost they need to produce that's why specialization leads to higher productivity for the producers of goods and services so interdependence and trade allow people to enjoy a greater quantity and variety of goods and services because many countries if we consider the international trade many producers if we consider the national or local trade have special capabilities to produce different different products therefore we we, we need to allow them to produce what is most profitable to them based on available resources the person who can produce a good with a smaller quantity of inputs means absolute advantage what we discussed very really beginning smaller quantity of inputs but smaller opportunity cost if we consider it is comparative advantage you can consider the difference between absolute advantage and comparative advantage absolute means one person can produce a good with a smaller quantity of inputs let's say he has to produce hats and uh, shoes both with smaller quantity of inputs he can produce hats then he has the absolute advantage of producing hats but if we consider comparative advantage you need to compare two people not only one people in absolute advantage one person we need to consider two people and we need to consider the opportunity cost when opportunity opportunity cost is lower we should go to produce them the foregone cost is low if foregone cost is higher he should not go for that one because he is losing more than he is getting okay so that's why the gains from trade are based on comparative advantage or the opportunity cost okay not the absolute advantage absolute advantage we can see if if one producer is producing two things if one thing can produce by using minimum inputs that is absolute advantage but the comparative we need to compare two producers or two countries just to see which is more profitable by using the lowest opportunity cost okay so uh, these are the main things i need to discuss today are there any problems because uh, today i think uh, you are just uh, learned uh, the new section with new components but next day also we discussed about production possibility curves and gains from trade then again we are discussing this gains from trade so meanwhile please remember just uh, the comparative advantage how we took by using this uh, uh opportunity cost principle and how to calculate this uh, opportunity cost and all i think then you can uh, with the practice you can come uh, next time then we discuss two main types of gains from trade then uh, we discussed about this uh, uh, mainly the measuring cost of production but here we focused on opportunity cost okay so the absolute advantage for producing one thing and the uh, comparative advantage for both cases 
Okay. So the principle of comparative advantage is the opportunity cost. So that's why we discussed opportunity cost in many cases, and we decide how they are getting gains from trade finally. Okay. So when you uh, consider with the, uh, the gains from trade with production possibility curves, I think you can get an a clear idea of these gains from print. Okay. So, any any other questions from today's lecture? Because somewhat uh, uh, different calculations we have done because you have done opportunity cost uh, and you have done uh, uh, production possibility curve. In next week, we will combine these two, then you will get more idea on gains from trade. Any questions? Savindu, Ashani, Bandaran? No, madam, we got that. Okay. No, madam. Okay. I know 100% you will not get the point at first instance. Uh, anyway, please read and understand and uh, let us meet next week with more uh, illustrations okay 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 madam thank you madam okay good night good night madam is there any reference book that we can sorry are there any reference books that we can uh, yes i'll give you references also next time uh, with references and all because still we have to do gains from trade uh, next week, because uh, next week we need to discuss with the production possibility curve. Then after finishing these two, I will give you uh, reference materials as well. Okay? Okay, madam. Thank okay. you. Okay, madam. Thank you. Good night. Okay, madam. Thank you. Good night. Good night, madam. Thank, thank you. you. See you next week. Okay, good night. Thank you, madam. Good night. Thank you.